At the time of recording, this is the last week of August, which means that school started this week after a predictably too short summer vacation. Now, logically, I know that not all schools start on the same day, but it felt like everyone in my life who's ever been a student or a teacher of some sort went back to school this Monday. And in some ways, I'm kind of jealous. Yeah, I realize that's not a super popular opinion, but just hear me out. I have always loved school. In fact, uh, ever since I graduated from college, I have been trying to figure out how to get back into school, but that's a conversation for another day. I just think that back to school season is such an exciting time of year. It's a time for new beginnings, for meeting new people, for getting serious about your academics or your career or, you know, whatever you're into. And plus, you start to be able to see Halloween in the distance, so that's always exciting. But school as in the mere idea of school, inspires a lot of overthinking. For example, you got to think about your first day of school outfit because first impressions are everything and you're probably getting a few new classmates or a new teacher that you have to impress or, you know, whatever. So you see where I'm going with this. It, It spirals out of control pretty quickly. And I think this is particularly true for folks who are attending or planning for college. And I'll tell you why. Because when you're in college, or you're about to go to college, or you're even thinking about going to college, the sheer act of going to school itself is a freaking huge decision. Here in the United States, we expect 17 and 18-year-olds to choose to pay thousands, if not tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars that they don't have to earn a piece of paper that will hopefully give them some kind of an edge in landing a future job or making more money than their peers. Don't get me wrong, there are lots of good reasons to go to college that go way beyond that, but that's the basic premise, I think. You or your parents agree to pay money now so you can make more money later in life. And that decision alone is a huge undertaking and it's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, anyone who's applying to college, fully formed brain or not, has to consider um, how or whether they plan to live at the college, the reputation of the academics there, the student culture, and one may argue, most importantly, uh, what the heck they're going to be studying there. Which brings us to today's overthinking it topic. Selecting a college major is one of the biggest, most difficult decisions that all college students or aspiring college students will make in their academic careers. And I personally would argue that it's one that almost nobody prepares college students for. You know, everyone always asks soon-to-be students what they're planning to major in, but no one, like, sits down with them and talks to them about what that's going to mean or how they're planning on making that decision. I personally was even lucky enough to have a college counselor in high school, and I still came into my first year of college with a very misinformed idea of what I thought I would be studying and, frankly, what I thought I would be doing with my life. And I know this goes beyond just my experience because I have known so many people that have changed their majors, um, many of them who have done so at least a few times. And because changing majors isn't always an easy thing to do, this is a huge source of stress for a lot of the college students I know and have known, including myself at one point in time. I'm hoping that this episode might potentially save a listener or two some of that pain. This is Overthinking It. I'm Kaylee Fagan, and this time we're going to talk about how to choose a college major. To help me bring some clarity to this complicated college decision, I've brought in a very special guest who is a real-life junior in college and just recently declared her major. Um, She's also my real-life sister. Uh, Her name is Molly Fagan, and I'll let her tell you the rest. Hi, Molly. (laughs) Hi. Um, Can you be so kind as to introduce yourself for the people? Sure. Um, My name is Molly. I'm Kaylee's younger sister. I am a college student. I currently go to Sacramento State, and I just recently declared as a film major. Yay! Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. I mean, I think we should just start by, like, speaking out into the world how much overthinking one can do about college in general, because I think college is one of those things that, like, justifiably could take up so much of your brain power 
Mm -hmm. And we're not even going to get to like 99% of that today. Like Mm -hmm. the thinking about, I, cause for a while I thought about maybe we should do a podcast about how to pick a college and that would take like 10 years. Yeah. (laughs) And I don't even think that I could speak to that with very Mm -hmm. much like, uh, information Mm -hmm. or expertise on the subject. Exactly. So we're going to focus on one little sliver that okay. people still manage to overthink a ton, yes. particularly <laughs> you and I. Yes. Um, and it'll be good. So okay. that said, I think we should start with um, having you tell us the story of how you went from, and this will, like, this will spoil it a little bit, but um, having gone from a high school senior who applied to colleges as an undeclared undecided uh student to just recently filing the paperwork to declare a major tell us a little bit of that story okay um from the beginning I was very unsure of what I wanted to do and what major I wanted to declare and and even what I wanted to do in the future um in high school and our high school that we both went to was very maybe made picking a college very important because it was a college preparatory school and, and all like of the matriculation for college rate is like 100 like percent. yeah they really yeah. want you to go to college and a good college the best possible college that you can go to and they want yeah. you to be you know a doctor they want you to be all these really right crazy which things. is good in some ways but like there's definitely a good amount of pressure i felt so much pressure from yeah. from that and i was really kind of freaking out because my college counselor would say, well, what do you like to do? And I would think about my hobbies and I was really into theater and I was really into sewing and like arts and crafts. And so I was thinking maybe I could uh, be a costume designer for a theater or something like that. And then by the end of the year, I re- the pressure actually really broke me. And I was thinking about going yeah. to colleges as a costume designer, but at, right at the end, I was like, I can't. I don't know if that's what I really what I want to do. I know that's things that I like to do, but I don't know if that's what I want to do in my future. And so the the pressure literally broke me and I decided to cut like all the schools that I was thinking about going to for costume design and just decided to look at the schools that were around where I lived in um, the East Bay and because they wanted to send you to like the other side of the country, Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Like she was which like, is yeah, f- which is far flung from our little town in, in California. <laughs> yes, to put that. In yeah, yeah. It was, they they had a lot of really big ideas, and it was it. I was, I didn't know what I wanted to do yet, and they. F- I felt like they were pushing me to do something that I wasn't that I personally didn't want to do. And so I decided I needed more time to figure out exactly what I wanted to do in terms of my major. Um, So I applied to a couple of schools around where I lived because I didn't want to live very far away from home. And I, once I figured out which schools I got into, I kind of figured which one I most wanted to go to. And I decided to go in undeclared, um, having some ideas of what I wanted to do, maybe theater, maybe some gender studies, maybe some costuming. I wasn't exactly sure yet, but I got into Sacramento State and I decided I was going to go there undeclared, take general education classes, which are required for graduation, and just see what subjects interest me as I started and as I went my first couple of years. So I have been going to Sac State for the past couple of years. I've taken a couple of, I've taken a gender studies class. I've been involved in the theater at Sac State. I have taken some film classes. I've written all my, you know, general general education classes. And I've kind of started to figure out things that I can see myself doing in the future and subjects, subjects that I'm interested in. So I was thinking, what are my passions and what are skills that I'm good at? And I've always been very good at production, live theater, working with a large group of people on a big project. And something that interests me always was film. And I had a couple of conversations with a few of my professors and one of my professors, uh, one of my gender studies professors said, if you want to do gender studies, you can do something like theater or film and talk about gender studies through that uh, medium. And so I was thinking maybe I could do 
film because I love film. I love working on set. I love production. I love writing. I love cinematography. So maybe I can do all of these things that I enjoy doing and put it all into film. I could work on the costumes. I could do the writing. I could write about whatever I wanted to. Gender studies, horror stories, which is another um, really big uh, an interest of yours. An interest, uh, yeah. Another big interest of mine. So I could kind of talk about whatever I wanted to through the medium of film, which is something that is going to make me money in the future and is a really relevant part of today's media and entertainment business. Yeah, people movies, like movies. M- Netflix, movies, shows, people are always binge watching everything. So that would be something that is always in demand. Yeah. And so I figured that was going to be a pretty good compilation of all of my interests and skill sets and something that I can see myself doing in the future and enjoying. And that's how I kind of came to the conclusion of becoming a film major. And I thought about it. I've taken a couple film classes and I really like all the film classes at school. And I thought it was a good fit for me and I decided to declare. And I did. There you go. Yeah. I think it's a really good fit for you too. I mean, Thank I know you. you really well. And yeah. so it makes a lot of sense to me. Like, the thing that I liked that you said was um, that it incorporated a lot of your interests. Mm -hmm. Not Um, just one or the other, but a lot of different things. Right. Like, you've, I've always known you to be a writer. I've always known you to be really into costumes and costuming Mm -hmm. effects, Mm -hmm. which, like, plays in. Exactly. It's just a cool, I think it makes perfect sense. Yeah, I do too, which is kind of exciting. It it really was cool to see it click after so many years of being apprehensive and nervous I kind of like figured. I finally kind of figured it out, and I and it was a relief. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. For sure. But before before we dig into the relief part of it, okay. I would like to go back to the beginning and okay. talk more about what it was like for you to come in as an undeclared slash undecided student. Mm-hmm. Like what what kind of you said you were relieved when you finally declared, but what mm-hmm. were the feelings like? Before that, before I remember at orientation, we would go around the room and ask everyone their name and where they were from and their major. And every single person had a major in the room except for me. But when I said undeclared, the um, oh, what are they called? They're like Um, um, like guidance counselors or no, like they're even like tour guides or yeah, orientation leader. Yeah, all right, um, whatever. You know, that guy. That guy, the, um, the guy that's like, all right, kids, <laughs> let's talk. I'm a senior. Yeah. The orientation uh, orientation leader, um, when I said I was undeclared, uh, she said, oh, that's really cool. You're going to have lots of time to figure it out. And she didn't say oh, any – she didn't make any comments about anyone okay. else's um, – about anyone else's uh, – major that they had decided. So I thought, I don't know, I went into it knowing that I wasn't as set up as everyone else to start their classes and everything, but I also knew that it was going to be okay. And I knew Mm -hmm. that people were excited for me to come into college and figure out what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So it was a little nervous. I was a little nervous at first because I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I also knew that there was a lot ahead of me that, and there was a lot of time for me to figure it out. Yeah. And pretty much everyone said, oh, that's a good way to go. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm happy for you. Like, oh, I'm glad for you. You're going to be able to figure it out. Like you have more time. You're going to, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everyone was pretty, pretty positive about it. All of my professors thought that that was a good thing because I, I knew I didn't want to declare when I wasn't ready to. Yeah. I guess. Well, that's good. I'm glad that there Mm -hmm. were people around you to to make you feel uh like it was a good decision and to back you up because it was a yeah. right decision I'm yeah. glad that that has been your experience yeah However, me too me too I know that for some people the world is like can be less supportive of, yeah of undecided yeah so like for example I'm gonna read a, a quote here um, okay. in 2010 Forbes uh dot com quoted this guy Chris Tier, who is okay. the director of college counseling at a high school somewhere in the Virginia Island. Wow, Virginia. In the Virgin <laughs> Islands. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Um, I will put a link to the article in okay. the show notes. Um, and he said that undecided kids in large universities often drift aimlessly from program to program, major mm. to major, sometimes having to spend additional years once they settle on a focus Mm. because they can't immediately schedule the courses they need to graduate. Mm -hmm. So 
How do you feel about that? I think that's true um, for some people. I really do. Sometimes I felt like I was wandering aimlessly a little bit, but I always knew what I, I knew what my interests are and I knew what I kind of wanted. I knew that I wanted to do something creative in the future. And so I had a little bit of direction. And then, so I was wandering back and forth between creative subjects, theater, liberal studies, kind of going back and forth. But you're still on schedule to graduate on time. Yes, I decided- It can be done. It can. I decided from the beginning that I wanted to get all of my general education courses done in the first two years, which is um, what my school was saying would be helpful if I hadn't decided a major because then I could just do my major courses my third year. So I got, I'm actually done with all of my general education courses now and I'm only gonna be doing major courses and I am on track to be done in in two more years. So to have finished in the four year period that people usually um, get done with college. So it's possible, you just kind of have to be strategic Mm -hmm. and make sure that you're getting your general education courses done. If possible, maybe you could find a major course that also is a general education yeah, course. Yeah, satisfies multiple, like, requirements. Both categories. I am all for that. Yeah, like, yeah. I became such a wizard at figuring yes. out how to fill the most requirements with the single yes. course. <laughs> yes, It's kind of a superpower. Feel free yeah. to email me if you need good. <laughs> um, that, that way you can kind of see the subjects in the classes and also making sure that you're on track to be done in four years and so you don't take multiple years. If you don't want to take multiple years after you kind of think you should be done yeah yeah um and then while we're talking about undeclared I just and slash undecided I know it it varies depending on the school I just want to like address the fact that it uh, some people I went to high school with knew more about this than I do but I just want to address the fact that I know that some people use undeclared slash undecided as like a strategic move um Mm -hmm. like if they're applying to a a program that's particularly competitive or particularly uh, impacted yeah. and they're worried about getting in, they'll apply to the same school as undeclared and try to weasel their way in after the fact. And mm-hmm. I just want to say that this, we don't have a lot of expertise about how to do that. No, yeah. If you're trying to to game the system that way, <laughs> go ahead and talk to a college counselor because yeah. we're here for the people who sincerely don't know what they want to do. Um, yeah, and I've never been sure and, you know, things like that. So. Yeah, and I've never been interested in an impacted major, so I personally oh, don't have buddy. any experience. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. Okay, well, maybe I'll speak to that. Okay. Bit, so, but at my college, everything is impacted. Oh, There's yeah. There's just too many bodies. Oh, no. Not enough chairs. Oh, no. That's a whole thing. Okay, and now uh, I, I ha- I've had a quote for you, and now i got a stat for you. You ready okay. for this? Okay, I'm ready. Hit um, me. Based on a research paper by um, Liz Friedman, who is okay. a researcher at Butler University in Indiana. Okay. Um, now, this is a pretty wide range here. Okay. So, take this number with a... a Grain of salt. Know, a, a good amount of salt. Okay. <laughs> a splash. Yeah, just a, a dash, <laughs> I think they call it. Okay. Um, roughly 20 to 50% of American college students enter college as, quote, undecided. Mm-hmm. So that's huge. So yeah, So the fact yes. that you were the only person in your group at the orientation that was undecided is actually kind of surprising. There might have been more in other yeah. groups. It was probably one out of 30 people, you mm-hmm. know, in that classroom. But I do I do know other people that started undeclared. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not like I was the only one in the 30,000 people that go to Sac State that right. were undeclared. Um, but yeah, I was the only one in the room at that time. Yeah. Interesting thing to think about. Mm-hmm. Just all this to say, it's not weird. It's not abnormal. No. It's no. not anything um, to be worried about or to make you feel like to, to feel like you are doing something in college wrong. No, there are plenty of other people who have no idea yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> plenty of people. And a lot of people even said, I'm jealous that you were undeclared because now Ooh. I'm yeah because now I'm in this program and I'm and I'm kind of want to change yeah. and I wish maybe I'd, I had come in undeclared and given it like a year or two yeah. so being undeclared is not a bad thing and I know lots of people are undeclared and it just gives you a little bit more time to think about it yeah yeah that same study okay this is related but separate that okay. same study found that an estimated 75 percent 
that is three whole fourths yeah. of college students in America will change their major oh, yeah. at least once yeah. before graduation. Probably more than once, I think. I think a good amount of, I would like to see how many of them change twice. E- like yeah, twice. it's probably more than the people who change once, I think. And this is a phenomenon that I can speak to a little bit because okay. I changed majors. Okay. Um, pretty early on, I don't remember exactly Mm -hmm. how early on. (laughs) It's all a blur. (laughs) A little bit. Um, Blacked it out. Well, because when I, I got to college and I applied to a state school, I went to San Mm -hmm. Francisco State University. Nice. Um. Gators? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Everybody, um, it gets confused for University of South Florida a lot because they are also the Gators. Uh, But they're also USF. Which you, like, oh. a person out here in our neck of the woods might think is University of San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's very complicated. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. Um, and I got there and was a very, uh, not proud, but a very confident English major. Mm-hmm. As you have to be as an English major, I, I feel like. I was so sure. Like, it was sort of a process of elimination thing. Like, it was the only thing, it was the only subject in high school that I really felt like I could dig in to and enjoy mm-hmm. that much. Mm-hmm. It was the only thing I was willing to dedicate to. And right, so I was like, right. all right, you know what? I'm just going to lean in on it. I'm going to make this my life. So I was, Which I feel like how most high schoolers feel about it, about one yeah. subject that they enjoy at the end of their I high school career. I also just like hated everything else. Like I hated math. <laughs> no, I hated math. Science. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I... I even weaseled my way out of taking science senior year. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I, anyway, hated everything else. Yes. So English it is. Okay. And I get there, and I remember at orientation, Mm -hmm. like day one, Mm -hmm. like day zero even, Mm -hmm. they signed me up for like a a lyrical poetry class, which Mm -hmm. was a major course for English. Um, Oh, cool. Yeah, and it it was a cool class. I ended up really liking it, but... And I remember going to see a, like a, a major counselor, I don't know, a department mm-hmm. counselor, mm-hmm. I guess. And they were like, okay, in the, the English department here has three concentrations. They are um, linguistics, mm-hmm. English education, mm-hmm. and literature. Mm-hmm. And I was like, mm. <laughs> I definitely don't want to be like a teacher. Mm-hmm. So it's linguistics, not, so now there's two options. Yeah, like, well, and then I was like, linguistics is not what I don't what I'm here for right like, at all you don't want to I, study English no you like, I write respect and, it right and I think that's a cool thing to study but that wasn't I, I just like to write right, right, right you know I'm not I don't I don't need to know about where language comes from I'm right. here to do the thing okay and then and then mm-hmm. I was looking at the like track for the um for the literature concentration mm-hmm. and it was all Shakespearean classes mm. and I'm William super over that already. Willie, I, like, <laughs> I don't want to spend this much time with Willie. No. Yeah. So one, it, one class is enough. Yeah. And yeah. I was, and so I found myself being like, when am I going to get to take the writing courses? Right. Yeah. And, uh, somebody had the wherewithal to be like, well, did, have you thought about the journalism department? Mm. Which was an impacted department. It was? Yeah. Oh. Surprisingly, yeah. no one would be into no. that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Turns out there just aren't enough chairs for the oh. people who are into it. There That's weren't a... very many people into it. It's a very small department. <laughs> and it was impacted? Yeah. <laughs> what? San Francisco State just has too many people. Every, every yeah. department's impacted. Yeah. Um, there's like three classrooms in that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but anyway. Oh my God. So I went to a... Um, it was like a student workshop day. It was like a okay. resume workshop or something mm-hmm. like super not very related, mm-hmm. but it was in the journalism department. And so I walked my butt up there. Like, mm-hmm. I okay. think it was in the same building. I'm being a little, you know, dramatic. <laughs> okay. but, but I went to the third floor instead of the fourth floor mm-hmm. and uh, went to the workshop and met one of the journalism teachers and told her like, hey, I'm in English. I'm thinking about this. What do I mm-hmm. do? And she put me... She set me on the right course. Turned out she was an advisor. Okay. So that got lucky there. Yeah, but cool. She uh, gave me the list of courses that non-majors could take. And so naturally oh. I took both of those. Okay. And then eventually, and then was at some point in the next year or two, uh, filled out the paperwork to declare mm-hmm. journalism as my major. Because mm-hmm. you, you needed to do that to keep going for the, yes. for the, the uh, 
upper classmen. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's what happened to me. I was so sure. Like I wasn't even very iffy, but I just uh-huh. didn't know. I knew that I wanted to write yes. so much, but I yes. did not know what the major itself at that specific program at that specific college yes, entailed. Yes. And there was no way I could have known. Until, until you I got could. there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that all that to say mm-hmm. that changing a major happens to everybody. It's and usually it's also not something to be afraid of or Yeah. Of. I was gonna say it's usually quite natural, yeah. I feel like for a lot of students, they go to college thinking this is exactly what they're going to do. And then they realize it's not exactly what they want to do. And then you just kind of naturally find what that thing is you want to do and the major that correlates with that thing. And I feel yeah. like it, it's, it's a pretty natural process to figure it out in college while you're already taking the classes yeah. and are surrounded by the professors who know and have the knowledge about that yeah. subject. And I mean, it, lots of people will be like me and will make a small pivot Mm. to something that's more exactly in line with mm-hmm. what they're visioning. More but precise. lots of people, I think it's totally okay. And I encourage people to not be afraid to make a huge pivot if need be. Yeah, like if I need be. I people in high school who were like, I hate math and science, but uh, it feels expected of me to study computer science. Mm. So I'm going to go in at computer science. Mm. Like those people probably are kicking themselves mm-hmm. here too. Mm. So like, I just want to say, like, do not be afraid to shift gears in yes. a big way. Yes. If necessary. Yes. I agree. So. you'll It'll be better in the long run if you're doing what you want to do instead yeah. of doing something that you don't actually like. <laughs> right. So now that we've both kind of given our, like, our uh, backgrounds and our uh, what brings us to have a little bit of wisdom about this, because I, mm-hmm. I think we have a little bit of wisdom I between too. the two of us. I like, did too. You were undeclared, I changed, yeah. and like, it, yeah. Yeah, we've been yeah. through college, yeah. We've done the whole, well, you are still in college. Oh, yeah. I've been through college. Oh, yeah. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're working your way through. Um, I think this is the part where we should impart some of that wisdom, some of that okay. expertise. Sure. Um, so I'll start, and then and then we'll we'll do a little back and forth here. But I okay. have I have the first the first my first tip. Please go for ahead. Those, you know, whether you're undeclared right now, you're declared but unsure, um, or you're just like laughing confidently <laughs> in the face mm-hmm. of this entire conversation. Mm-hmm. If you're not even in college, you thought about that. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is still relevant. This oh, is yeah. relevant to all of y'all. <laughs> um, here hit me. are hit me some with of that the best wisdom. tips for picking a college major. Okay. First step, this seems obvious, but we're going to say it. First step is always to think about what you're into. Mm -hmm. Think about what you like in your personal life. Think about what you liked or like in school. Mm -hmm. Um, And do what I did, which is start eliminating Mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Because some stuff is going to be easy. Like, uh, do not major in computer science if you hate math and science. Just don't do it. No way. Just don't do it. Yeah, no way. So that, that'll that eliminate entire departments for Yes, you. yes. You know what I mean? And don't major in something because it sounds good on paper. <sighs> don't do it. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do it. Do what you want to do and what you're good at, not right. what you think is going to be good for you or what looks good on paper. or. Right. Which is a little complicated because we said that just because you liked uh, costuming – but you weren't sure if you wanted to do it with your life. I understand it's complicated. Yeah. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that. Mm-hmm. But think about the things that you that genuinely bring you joy. And mm-hmm. if it does not bring you joy, mm-hmm. you throw it away. Mm-hmm. And then you have only joyful things to pick from. Marie Kondo, that shit. You know? Yeah. Do you want to take the next one? Yeah. Um, one of the things that I was really thinking about when I was trying to find a major... Um, for this next tip is I was thinking about the job or profession that I want to be doing 10, 20 years from now. Um, I think it's important to think about what you want to be doing in multiple years. And then you can kind of work backwards and think, okay, to to get that job, what do I need to be doing now in school? Which like, let's just address the fact that thinking about 10 20 years that's a that's so far I know future. it's really like, it far it is hard to do I know so if and I, I struggled with it for years <laughs> I still do yeah I can't I don't know what I'm doing next year <laughs> if it if that is too big for you at 
you know, 18, 19, mm-hmm. or however the heck old you are. Mm-hmm. Um, because I currently struggle to think that far. Mm-hmm. Like you could, you can think about entry level jobs. A yeah, big, a that's big, a good way to start. A big reason for a long time, I thought that English might be um, like my my pre law major that mm-hmm. I would go into law mm-hmm. somehow and mm-hmm. then find myself in law school one way or the other. And uh, the big thing that that um, made me realize that I didn't really want that was I didn't want to be like an entry level paralegal. I don't want to mm-hmm. do a bunch of brunt work for mm-hmm. somebody else for a lot of years to establish myself, which is a requirement right. to be a big deal attorney. Right. So I just had to make peace with that. Mm-hmm. So if if, mm-hmm. two, if ten or twenty years ten or twenty years is is great to think about and super great to <laughs> fantasize about, but if mm-hmm. that's too big, also start small. Think about uh, what you could do, what you would be interested in doing now, like in mm-hmm. an ideal world where you didn't mm-hmm. need a degree. What would you do right now? Right. What kind? Yeah. What what kind of job would interest you? Right. And like in I said, right now, like I said earlier, I I really did enjoy theater. That is something mm-hmm. that I liked to do but I didn't think I wanted to be doing that as a career. And I also liked costuming, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that as a career. And so I was just thinking about things that I would enjoy doing. And I thought, well, how would I feel if I was on a set of a production or a show or a film and I was directing or I was writing or I was doing cinematography. Or if you were just a a production assistant on a movie set. Oh yeah, that'd be so cool. I totally know that that would have been the best job ever for you. Oh yeah. Yeah. That would be so cool. And so I just, I thought, okay, I would really enjoy that job. You know, maybe I should start studying that now and get a head start in school. There you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you know, before we move on really quickly, I would like to also... This is a little paradoxical, but I'm, we're going to do it. We can okay. we can handle this with our big brains. Okay. <laughs> our big boy brains? Yeah. Okay. Um, while thinking about one's career can help you th- come up with what major you want to pursue, know that, know, keep in the back of one's mind, keep in the back of your mind that, that any major is going to be a good major for any job. Does that make sense? Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. There are no bad college degrees. I agree. That doesn't mean that you should get a degree in something that you don't like. That has nothing, yeah, yeah. or has nothing to do with what you want to do in the future. I think that would be a bad idea to spend your four years getting a math degree. And and your money. Oh, gosh, yeah. Spending all your money and all your time and all your effort four years on doing a math degree and then not wanting to do a math job. But I think any degree would be helpful for you getting a job in the future and would set you apart from other people also trying to get jobs. Yeah. And also know that a degree in one thing can be applied lots of different ways. Yes. I can most closely speak to journalism just because that's, you know, what I know best. But we had plenty of people in my journalism department who did not want to be reporters. Right. They wanted to be, um, they wanted to work in sports media. They wanted to work in oh, PR. They wanted oh. to be like graphic designers, all kinds oh. of different stuff. Yeah. Um, and a journalism degree was going to be the thing that helps them do that. Yes. So keep in mind that your degree can be applied widely. Just speak, like, don't limit yourself to think that you have to do one job with one major specific job that you associate with that. Mm -hmm. Like Like a business degree could, you could do anything with a business degree. Yeah. I'm trying to think of an example. It has like one to one ratio. Um, Aerospace engineering, I guess you would become a. I don't know anything about. (laughs) (laughs) Me neither. Me neither. um, Like, like. For example, well, I guess computer science is, is like, um... That's pretty narrow. Uh, is it? I don't know. Uh, like, your computer science degree is going to make your resume look good no matter yeah, what you do. That's true. So if you want to study computer science, do that. E- like, study computer science even if you don't want to be a coder. Yeah, if it, yeah. If it is something that interests you. Yeah, because like, yes, because it'll help you on a resume. Right, and you'll have skills that are going yes, to be yes. you so useful all yeah. over the stinking world. Yeah. You can build apps and write websites, you know, in a way that is not like the rigid 
job title way that mm-hmm. you that you might be worried about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to speak that out into the world. Okay. okay. Moving along. Perfect. I deeply recommend thinking about whether you want to spend your time in college learning about something or learning how to do something. So this is the thing that college counselors, I don't think, give enough time to, for. There mm-hmm. are two different, like, approaches to classes, to, to lectures. There are classes about subjects, and there are skill-based how-to-do-something courses. So yes. So the biggest, the, like, most direct example that I have from mm-hmm. my personal life was the English department at my school was, a, was learning about the language of English, learning mm-hmm. about writing, mm-hmm. about Shakespearean writing, about literature, about poetry. I wanted to learn to do those things. Right. I wanted to learn to write. Right. Um, and sure, I'm sure if I had stayed with the program, we would have gotten to a lot of that. But mm-hmm. the overall, the overall of the program was that you were learning about a subject, whereas I was more interested in a skills based. Mm-hmm. Doing, uh, doing program the where instead of taking Shakespearean literatures one, two, and three, I took news writing, news editing, yes. and and classes along those lines. Right. So those each class came with a specific skill that I developed along the way, and that's going to be different for everybody because some people are much more conceptual. They want to think about things. They want to. Mm-hmm. They want to. Uh, break apart subjects and talk about them mm-hmm. in more detail. And some people want to learn how direct skills that they can take with them that day Mm -hmm. and run with it. So I recommend knowing which kind of person you want to be. Yeah. The the same thing is in the film program. There's a film studies major Mm -hmm. and then there's a film production major. Mm -hmm. And I decided to do film production because I want to be working on the set. I want to do the production. I want to do the editing, do the filming versus I don't even know what film studies Um, jobs would be. You see, no, here's the thing. Lots of the lots of majors will kind of do a little bit of both. Like, yeah, you know, there's a little, there's overlap yeah, for there's sure. There's always a little of course, bit of both. Of but, course. It's the, but when there are separate majors, you got mm-hmm. then that's when it becomes a part of the equation. Yeah. Like, you can become an accountant, like you can do accounting and they'll teach you how to do accounting. Yes. The skill that is accounting. Yes. <laughs> or you can take business. And learn business practices, business concepts. Right, That right. are bigger and more more conceptual that you will take with you out into the world but are yes. less skill-based. Yes, yes, so yes. That's a thing to think about. This seems really obvious, but I think we both have uh, benefited from this tip, which is take classes in that department before you declare your yes. major that, that thing. Yes, yes, if yes. If you're thinking that a major sounds like a good idea for you, Try one of their courses. Every single major in your college will have some like entry level, non major required courses that you can take. Mm-hmm. And they probably will even go towards your general education. Oh, yeah, requirements usually they too. Do. Yeah, exactly. For sure. That's like my biggest one. I particularly do this if uh, the major is far from your current one or is. <laughs> Or isn't like a little out of left field for you if you're undeclared? Always test the waters. Yeah, I took two different film classes, two different semesters, and you know, two very different teachers. And one I liked a little bit more than the other. One was more informative. We had more writing in the other one. So if you're looking towards a major, maybe even do more than one of yeah, those that's classes. Yeah, that's a good point because t- professors make or break the thing like if you take one course and you happen to get the worst teacher ever you're (laughs) gonna think oh man now I hate that thing that I thought I would like yeah and it's just that one professor it's not the whole major test it out please moving right along you have the next one there I do um I have something I think is I have I think this is a good tip for people who are um, unsure of what they want to do thinking they want to go in undeclared but they're worried about it um I think that indecision should not stop you from going to school just because you don't know what you want to do so we're taking a step back like uh where this person that we were giving this advice to hasn't even picked a school yet they're not even in school yet 
they're thinking about whether or not they want to. No, go. yeah, this is this is the the senior in high school or okay. someone who has already graduated, maybe taking a year off and okay. thinking. Seniors in high school. This one's for you. Listen up, buddies. Um, I was I when all that pressure kind of broke me in senior year, and I I just wiped my hands and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna stop doing what I'm doing. And for a moment, I was like, I don't even know if I'm gonna go to school. I remember just, that moment. Yeah, just, I, I'm you just, I said I was going to be a farmer. <laughs> you told everybody that you were going to be a farmer. Yeah. And that you were going to live off the land. Yeah. And oh, we yeah. like, oh, so you're going to go to UC Davis? No, I was like, I'm going to be Which a farmer. That is a funny joke. That is a funny joke. Yeah. Go Ags. They're Aggies. That's really embarrassing <laughs> for you. <laughs> no, Ags. It's the Aggies. shortened version of Aggies. Oh, do they say, oh is that Kaylee, I'm, I hang out at UC Davis yeah, all the do. time. That's why it's embarrassing for you that Kaylee. you don't know what they're... No, stop. What they're people, people from UC Davis, please be on my side. Go Ags is a thing. Anyways, but there was a time where I thought I was going to be a farmer and I just decided to quit school and was like, okay, I'm going to grow carrots and potatoes and not go to school because <laughs> the pressure of school is too much for me. But then I was thinking, you know, I do want to go to school. I know I want to get a um, certificate of some sort at the end of this. I know I want college education. You want the receipt. I do. I want the receipts. So I just, I knew I just had to do it, even though I was apprehensive and nervous. So don't let that indecision stop you. Um, don't let the pressure like stop you. If you know you want to get a college education, please do. Please don't let that stop you. Go to all the schools that you, uh, apply to all the schools that you want to go to, go to college, and then go from there. Go in undeclared and just go from there. You know, this is an interesting point because I agree with you wholeheartedly, but I want to challenge you. Um, okay. Do it. Specific, because specifically, um, I know that there is a school of thought that those who go to a university as an undecided or undeclared, like there is a there's a serious school of thought that says like those people should probably just go to a junior college or a community college. I mean, until they figure I themselves guess. out. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think community colleges are awesome for people who want to go there, want to save money, like want to stay at home. There's plenty of reasons for people to go to a community college or a junior college. Like so many, there's, don't let me stop you from going to a community college if that's what you want to do. But if you're undecided, I don't think that should be the reason that you go to a community college. I think if you're undecided, but you know that the college experience that you want is at a private school or is at a state school or something like that, then you should or pursue more, that. More, a more traditional university. Yeah if, the, yeah, if that's what you see yourself doing, do that and just go in and declare. You don't have to go to a community college. Yeah. Do, do the college experience that you want rather than letting someone tell you what they think you should be doing. Yeah. If you want to go to a community college, please do. But that's not the only... That's not your only fate if you were an undecided. No, absolutely not. Like I, the stat you said earlier, a bunch of people go in undeclared. That you can yeah. absolutely go to a, um, a quote unquote regular school, like a state school or a UC or any other. You can go to a big college undeclared. That's totally fine. That's a UCs or University of California. It's very if you didn't know California specific, but you get it. You get the point. So, do you know anybody that the double majored? Is that like a, even a very, conversation that we should have? Very few people, um, and they are probably dead of exhaustion yeah, um, by now. People who double major have so much work to do. You know, it's twice I, the amount of work that I, you have to do. I know a handful of people who have multiple bachelor's degrees. Oh, my gosh. Is that the same thing as double, as double majoring? Major? I don't think so. Do they Be- give you two? No, they don't. They don't when you double major. That's You just get a piece of paper that says you double majored. <sighs> when you get... No. Two degrees. They hand you two pieces of paper. I'm thinking yeah. of the wrong thing. No, I think, okay. yeah. Those are two different things. I mean, double majoring is a lot of yeah. work, though. Yeah. I, I'm not I, planning to do that, I've but. I've yet to see a benefit of double majoring that could not be achieved by minoring. Which yeah, I'm, which yeah. I'm kind of a proponent of, frankly. Unless there's something very specific that you really want to double major in, you know, that's fine. Don't let that stop you. If, know yourself. Yeah, you just have to know yourself because if you don't, you might go into it and be working yourself way too hard and not yeah. have time for anything else. Mm-hmm. But if there's a if there's a way that you could do it as a minor, mm-hmm. that would be so easy. Yeah, for you to Minors do it as a minor. Are a thing. 
um, that I they think are. indeed uh, we don't always hear about, but they're they're good. I think yeah, they're oh yeah, worth doing if you have the time and if you care that much. Because if you don't care that much, then just get, get out with your degree and do your yeah. thing. But I was in a department that required a minor. And, oh, interesting. Yeah, which uh, yeah, that happens. It's all good. Okay. Um, and I was really grateful for it because it allowed me to take courses in a thing that I was already really interested in, but knew that I didn't want to be my major. Mm -hmm. So I minored Mm -hmm. in women and gender studies, um, which was actually, I mean, California state system. It was a really easy thing to do. Yeah. Um, Not that the courses were easy at all, (laughs) but um, that it uh, comparatively, I had to take not very many classes. So like the, the major was like, you have to take, you know, 15 or 17, 18 Mm -hmm. Uh, units of courses. Right. This one, I'm all the way off. You had to take 15 or 17 classes, I think. Whoa. Yeah. Oh like, my gosh. I maybe. No, I think that sounds off. right. No, I think yeah. that sounds right. Yeah. And then, something like that. And then the courses for my minor, it was like three or five. Wow. Yeah. So and I already, right? and I wanted to take a lot of those classes mm-hmm. because this, these were the issues that I was interested in doing reporting on. Yes. 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 Um, and so now when I got my piece of paper at the end, it said, I know a lot about journalism and I know a lot about women and gender studies. Yeah. Both of them. Um, and here's the receipt. I, yeah, uh, for sure. Minors can be super helpful for something a little more honed in on yeah. for your major. Yeah. Um, like I want to do film and I want to make films and productions and everything, but I am, I'm, I don't think I've declared yet, but I'm thinking about minoring in business just because yeah. I think that would be skills that would be super helpful for me as someone who wants to do these oh, totally. weird <laughs> things like production and film. And so I just think business. Well, especially if you want to like sell indie films and right like get yeah someone to fund your movies yes like. I, I just think business would be really helpful for me as yeah. someone who doesn't know anything about business maybe starting some things on my own mm-hmm. in this film industry i just think it would be super helpful so i'm interested in doing that totally well i feel like we've about covered it do you yeah. do you have any any last thoughts or advice for our our college uh attendees or college hopefuls or college yeah. uh, alumni Col- okay. who are just here for fun. <laughs> it, I feel like a lot of this conversation is would also like translate really well into a conversation about if you just wanted to make like a career change mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. or a new find a new direction in one's career. Yeah. Perhaps that's another another podcast episode. itself. Yeah, but I think my last piece of advice would be to not sweat it. Please don't sweat it. If you are so nervous and apprehensive about this whole college thing and picking your major and um, do I don't know, just this whole this educational school thing. Yeah. Stop sweating it because it's, it's, it's gonna be okay. How can it, I not? It is gonna be a big commitment, but if you want to do this thing, you're gonna do it because you want to. Yeah. And it'll be done in the end and everything's going to work out. Just, like, don't sweat it at the very beginning yeah. because it'll make you not want to do what you want to do. It'll make you not go to school at all. There's just no reason to sweat it. There are other people who can help you. There's advisors for that. Your family is there for that. Your mm. friends are there for that. That's good. We're here for that. Mm. That's why we're making this podcast. Don't sweat it, you know? That's a good piece of lasting advice, though, also, is um, reach out for help. Please, 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 please. I would not be where I am if it wasn't for my support system. A lot of my support system is my family and my friends, but there were multiple advisors and professors who just talking to them and having conversations with them really helped me figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah, I was, like I said, I went and found that event that eventually helped me find the right department that yeah. I wanted to be in. Yeah. I was also like the first person in the advisor's office every semester. Nice. Um, so do that. Yeah. Talk if you, to if your you, professors, talk to the advisors. If you need help, ask for it. Yeah. For sure. All right. And with that, we will end it here. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have fun in college. Yeah. Is school start? How do you feel about school starting? Molly? I'm actually pretty excited. I've been really bored this summer. Oh, okay. I'm doing a whole lot of nothing. You work a lot. What are you talking I do. About? I do. I'm excited to go back to my classes, and I'm starting my major classes. Yay. Yeah. I'm gonna do screenwriting and a bunch of stuff. I'm excited about it. All right. Yeah. On that note, 
We will see you all next time. That is all for today. Only three episodes in, and I am already inviting my immediate family members on the show. That's got to be some kind of a record. Please share this episode with a college student or an aspiring college student in your life. Choosing a major is a very stressful decision, and Molly and I would love to be there for them as they undergo that journey. You can subscribe to this podcast on SoundCloud or wherever you listen to it if you'd like to get updates on future episodes. Thanks, everyone. Till next time.